Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 60-year-old female who's got shoulder pain for about three weeks. She's had prior surgery. She has a few findings, but uh, we're going to look at the rotator cuff um, for this video, and we can see the back here. This is posterior. This is the teres minor. This is the infraspinatus. This is the supraspinatus. These are all looking pretty good. And if we get over to the subscapularis tendon, this is it. Looks pretty good back here. We go forward, 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 right at the attachment. It's a little bit bright, which is abnormal. We go back here. It looks a little foggy here too. Very subtle. This is the biceps tendon, so I know anything in front of the biceps is going to be subscapularis, but it looks a little bit too bright. The other thing we notice is there's this fluid collection, which is absolutely abnormal here in front of the subscapularis. So right between the core cord process and the subscapularis tendon is the subscapular bursa. So this is a, an acute bursitis. Now oftentimes you see fluid right here, but it doesn't go down so low. It's usually a part of the joint effusion and the fluid protrudes anteriorly and it goes beneath the coracoid process. We call that fluid in the superior subscapularis recess. So it's just a joint effusion basically that looks very similar to this, but here we don't have fluid in the joint. And we see it right here along in front of the subscapularis. So this is a subscapular bursal effusion, acute bursitis. And now we're going to look and see how far the coracoid process is from the lesser tuberosity to see if this may be getting pinched because the first thing you think about when you see findings right here alone. So we're going to measure this. Normally it's a centimeter or so, or it should be a centimeter or more, they say. And this one measures five millimeters, so definitely narrowed. I usually think of anything under eight millimeters or so is really suspect seven or eight, but in the books they say sometimes 10 or less is abnormal. And this is again the core cord process. Here's the lesser tuberosity. We do see that bright signal in the subscapularis tendon attachment, so some tendinopathy. Really not as bad as we see sometimes. And if we try to measure here, we'll say, okay, how is that? That's uh, six millimeters. So again, way less than one centimeter and uh, definitely uh, narrowed. And also we have the combination of the increased signal, the narrowing, and this subscapular bursal effusion. And these things all come together for a diagnosis of coracoid impingement. So when this is narrow the space, the uh, humeral head can rotate inward and uh, pinch this, or just uh, with every motion it gets pinched, and this, they call this coracoid impingement, and uh, not terribly uncommon, I haven't seen one in several months, been waiting for one to come, and so I was excited to see this and share it with you, so thank you very much.